Hello all, welcome back to the course Basic Signal Processing. I am Dr. Ravi Chandra Kulkarni and till the last video we have been going through different aspects of matrices. Now it is uh, high time that we get into the actual syllabus of uh, VTU for Basic Signal Processing. Uh, the subject code for the same is 21EC33 and it is uh, uh, 3 is to 0 is to 2 uh, an integrated uh, co professional core uh, where uh, 3 hours is dedicated to uh, theory classes and 2 hours for hands on uh, laboratory classes uh, which we will be doing uh, using the software Octave. Uh, so here uh, the module 1 of basic signal processing uh, consists of vector spaces, null spaces, rank and row reduced form of matrix, linear dependence and ind independence, basis and dimension of the matrix, dimensions of the four subspaces, rank, nullity theorem, linear transformations, orthogonality, orthogonal vectors and subspaces as part of orthogonality, projections and least squares and orthogonal basis and Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure and the referring uh, text and chapters are mentioned here in the syllabus and we will be using YouTube videos which we are currently going through and flip class technique and programming techniques using Octave programming assignments right uh, which is an open source alternative for uh, MATLAB and is a very uh, what do you say versatile tool uh, to make use of for signal processing right uh, moving ahead in module 2, it is again continuation of uh, matrices, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix. Uh, that is what exactly the review because it says review because it is assumed that uh, most of the first year mathematics uh, syllabus uh, consists of uh, eigenvalues and diagonalization of uh, matrix uh, and special matrices, positive definite matrix, symmetric matrix and their properties and SVD or singular value decomposition of the call and for this again text 1 is used which is Gilbert Strang textbook details of which we will get through at the end of this uh, video or maybe at the end of the syllabus uh, and then um, it's a chapter 5 again, and again we will be having classroom sessions YouTube videos and flipped class techniques and programming assignments using Octave again right so next in module 3 you will be introduced to uh, signals which is an interesting part of any engineering course I should say or at least circuit branches. So signal and system definition wise with examples, elementary signals like various types of signals, unit, ramp, impulse etc. And then from there we will get into um, yeah, asset, exponential, sinusoidal step, impulse and ramp functions and their operations on signals that is amplitude scaling, addition, multiplication, time scaling, time shift and time reversal, expression of triangular, rectangular and other waveforms in terms of elementary signals and system, you will be introduced to what is system and different types of system, linear, nonlinear, time variant, time invariant, causal, non-causal, static, dynamic, stable, unstable, invertible systems and systems. And in module 4, we get into time domain representation of systems and for each uh, different types of inputs what is the general uh, response is uh, checked in for system but impulse response gives the characteristic of the system so hence impulse response becomes an important aspect of time domain representation of LTA system then we get into convolution sum computation of convolution sum using graphical method for unit step and unit uh, sorry I think it is uh, for unit step and unit step that is considering two uh, sets of uh, uh, signals and uh, unit step and exponential uh, combination exponential and exponential combination unit step and rectangular and rectangular and rectangular all different types of combinations are used to calculate convolution sum using graphical method uh, LTI system properties in terms of impulse response, system interconnection, memoryless, causal, stable, invertible, deconvolution and step response. These are the uh, topics which will be discussed as second part of module 4 and again the techniques used will be the same 
and we'll try to use octave as much as possible wherever we find time and scope we'll be using octave and z transform as module 5 you have again i believe uh, it is there in mathematics z transforms we will make uh, use of z transforms for various to understand various properties of z transforms uh, and um, inverse z transform with partial fraction method causality stability using rest z transforms transform analysis of lta systems and again we will be using the same methodology or um, techniques to understand the concepts in this module right as said this is an ipcc that is integrated uh, professional code course so we have uh, certain experiments to complete so again we'll be using octave and uh, matlab if required or i should place it as or matlab wherever it is required uh, we will use these two tools and try to uh, get as many uh, assignments out of it as possible and generation of discrete waveforms uh, basic operations and convolutions uh, commutative property of convolution different distributive associative different properties of convolutions are uh, what is ascertained or verified using uh, uh, the software tool and program to compute step response from the given impulse response and program to find z transforms and inverse z transform of a sequence we will be doing it using octave or matlab tools right this is to improvise your understanding and as said signals and systems plays a very important role in electronics and communication engineering you need to know various aspects of it so that you can uh, easily use it for uh, sound processing uh, image processing video processing uh, even in your uh, communication signals uh, coding decoding etc all all different aspects uh, of wherever there is a possibility of using an equation uh, which can be represented uh, with a time domain and then into frequency domain and wherever there is a possibility of uh, using different manipulation techniques using matrices this course and uh, extension of this course into uh, next uh, semesters will be really useful and handy if known fundamentally and clearly so here uh, the uh, suggested textbooks and reference books are as uh, shown and uh, we will be referring to most of the uh, textbooks here and then we will be uh, going through different problems right so it is time that we get into the very first module and the very first concept of uh, signals and systems today so that is uh, vector spaces so as the name itself suggests vector spaces so they have something to do with uh, vectors that is if we consider column vectors and row vectors matrices are nothing but set of vectors we can say right that is rows and columns together and if they contain real numbers then they become real vectors so now a real vector space what is a space if you uh, consider space in general then it is something where some things can be put right that is the space in general uh, terminology so here uh, a real vector space is a set of vectors together when they are placed together or are considered together with rules for addition vector addition and multiplication be by real numbers so that is scalar multiplication in a sense right they adhere to this rule right then that particular set or space we call it as a real vector space right or a vector space addition and multiplication must produce vectors in the same space and they must satisfy other eight conditions the very first condition is vector addition and if you can see uh, condition number six that is our multiplication by real numbers or scalar multiple of a vector right c times u should be in the vector that is uh, if i can elaborate on the condition one and condition six it is uh, that the sum of u and v if u and v are two vectors right which belong to u and v belong to v that is a vector space of real numbers then u plus v should also belong to v 
So that is one preliminary condition to be satisfied in order to call it as a vector space. Then the commutative property u plus v and v plus u and the associative property u plus v plus w and u plus v plus w so is to be satisfied and there is a zero vector in v such that u plus zero is equal to u that is a zero vector right and for each u in v there is another vector minus u such that or inverse vector what we can say u plus i mean when you add those two vectors inverse plus the vector that gives zero vector and then distributive property that is c into u plus v is equal to c u plus c v similarly c plus d two scalars into u is equal to c times u vector plus d times u vector c into d u is equal to c d into u so uh, and one into u is equal to one that is identity matrix or identity vector into uh, u vector is u vector so all these conditions or axioms to be satisfied to call it as a real vector space going ahead the space of 3 by 2 matrices that is 3 by 2 matrices uh, or the vectors 3 by 2 matrix if i have to take a 3 by 2 matrix that is three rows and two columns uh, that would be 1 2 3 and 3 1 1 so let uh, a be one of the 3 by 2 matrix and uh, if I take B as 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, yes, then A plus B would be uh, if we add and uh, as uh, you know with the matrix addition. Uh, the rule the corresponding elements to be added 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 0 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 and 1 plus 1 is 2 1 plus 0 is 1 right so now a plus b which is the c vector if i consider then the sum also belongs to 3 cross 2 matrix right the resultant is a 3 cross 2 matrix and if I multiply this A or B with a scalar, say if I take uh, that to be uh, 2, then 2 times A is equal to 2, 4, 6, each individual element multiplied with the scalar. So 6, 2, 2. If you can observe this also belongs to 3 cross 2. So my uh, A plus B, that is addition rule and scalar multiplication is uh, found out and it belongs to the same space 3 cross 2 matrix and similarly there is a 0 matrix uh, in uh, 2 cross uh, sorry 3 cross 2 dot If I have to consider two matrices, A is equal to 3 by 2 matrix, that is 3 row and 2 columns. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, A. Now this belongs to 3 cross 2 matrix, right? So it is part of that space what we are talking about and B is equal to, say if I go with 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 1. So this also belongs to 3 cross 2 matrix, right? 3 rows and 2 columns. And now if I add both A plus B, then uh, we know that matrix addition rule that the corresponding elements to be, multi uh, to be added and we need to make sure that they are of the same dimension. Only then we can add. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4 and 3 plus 2 is 5 and 5 plus 1 is 6, 7 plus 3, 10, and 1 plus 9, 10. So we have A plus B as a 3 cross 2 matrix, which also belongs to the same 
vector space right so and if i multiply matrix a with a scalar that is 2 times a then each individual element will be multiplied by 2 that is 2 4 6 10 14 18 and this also belongs to 3 cross 2 right so we have uh, satisfied addition and scalar multiplication and if we check uh, all the other eight conditions for this particular uh, matrix space that is 3 by 2 matrices space containing 3 by 2 matrices all 3 by 2 matrices no matter what will satisfy all the uh, axioms and hence is a very good example of vector space right now let me take an example of non vector space so if i consider a vector r2 space that is set of two real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. So if I mean the set of numbers set of two numbers uh, which satisfy this condition if we consider that set we need to examine if they are vector space or not right. So they constitute a vector space or not. Now since I have said that it is a non vector space example you should be smart enough to guess that it is a uh, it does not satisfy but we need to check how so let me consider two vectors in this uh, space or satisfying this condition say for example u is equal to 1 2 and v is equal to if I consider uh, 2 and minus 3 this is set of two real numbers this is also set of two real numbers but here uh, this does not belong to this particular vector space. Now, if I have to change because it defies the condition y is greater than or equal to 0, if I have to change 2 and 1, so which makes it uh, satis uh, satisfying this y is greater than or equal to 0 condition, then u plus v will be 1 plus 2 that is 3 and 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and this is also a set of two real numbers belonging to R2 and hence addition rule is satisfied. But if I consider a scalar C is equal to minus 1, then C is equal C, uh, C or uh, then C times U is equal to minus 1 times 1, 2 that is minus 1 minus 2 and this does not belong to v because x is not greater than or equal to 0 and y is also not greater than or equal to, equal to 0 hence this particular space or uh, the set of numbers does not constitute for a vector space hope uh, these two examples make it clear for uh, the viewers how to identify a vector space and a non vector space we can go through further examples in the next video and also see what a vector subspace is. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll come back with more.